What exactly is a fraction, and where do we use fractions? When we're counting whole objects like pizzas, we can use whole numbers to keep track of how many we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As the pizzas are eaten, we can also use whole numbers to count how many we have left. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. But now that we have one pizza left, what if parts of that pizza are eaten? Now how do we count what's left? When we're dealing with parts of a whole, we must use fractions. In a fraction, we always have a line like this. Above the line, there's a whole number, and below the line, another whole number. An example would be the number 1 on top and the number 2 on the bottom. Another example could be a 3 on top and an 8 on the bottom. The number on top of the line is called the numerator, and the number below the line is called the denominator. For example, for the fraction 3 over 8, 3 is the numerator and 8 is the denominator. But what do these things mean? The denominator is the number of parts a single thing is divided into. Let's say we have a whole pizza and we divide it into two parts. Here we can write a fraction for which the denominator is 2. This is because the pizza is divided into two parts. To review, the denominator is the number of parts a single thing is divided into. So what does the numerator mean? The numerator is the number of those parts we're talking about. So let's go back to our pizza that was cut into two parts, giving us a denominator of two. Let's say someone ate the piece of pizza on the right. So out of the two original pieces, we have one piece left. Remember the numerator is the number of parts we're talking about. If we're talking about the one piece we have left, the one is our numerator in the fraction. So the fraction we made is 1 over 2, which is also called 1 half. So we can now say that 1 half of the pizza is left uneaten. Let's start with one full pizza again. This time we'll cut it up into smaller pieces. If we number these pieces, we see we now have 8 pieces. The denominator is the number of parts a single thing is divided into. So we can write a fraction in which the denominator is 8. Let's say someone eats one of the pieces of our pizza. Now we want to know what fraction of our pizza is left uneaten. We're talking about 7 pieces, so the numerator of our fraction is 7. And we can say that 7 eighths of our pizza is left uneaten. Now someone eats two more pieces. So we can say that we now have five eighths of our pizza left uneaten. While we were talking about fractions, someone ate four more of the pieces. So now we have only one eighth of our pizza left uneaten. To review, the denominator, or the number on the bottom of a fraction, tells us how many parts a single thing is divided into. And the numerator, or the number on top of the fraction, tells us the number of those parts we're talking about. Now that we have a better understanding of what fractions are, we may ask, where can fractions be used? One place fractions are sometimes used is in making measurements. Here we have a piece of wood, and we need the length to be four-fifths of a centimeter. We can bring in a ruler like this. We see that on this ruler, each centimeter is divided into five parts. So we can make some fractions with a denominator of five. The distance between each small tick is one-fifth of a centimeter, so we can label the ticks like this. The pink arrow shows where four-fifths of a centimeter is on our ruler. So we can get a pencil and draw a line on our piece of wood right at four-fifths of a centimeter. Now we just need to cut along this marked line to give us a piece of wood with a length of four-fifths of a centimeter. 
Sometimes going out to eat requires the use of fractions. When the bill comes, this group decides to split the cost evenly. There are five people in the group, so each person would need to pay one-fifth of the bill. Fractions are used in sports, too. A soccer game is usually divided into two halves. So if a game lasts 90 minutes, each half lasts one half times 90, or 45 minutes. In a basketball game, the total playing time is usually divided into four quarters. So if the total playing time is 32 minutes, each quarter takes one quarter times 32, or eight minutes. In a hockey game, the total time the puck is in play is divided into three periods. So if the total playing time is 60 minutes, each period takes one-third times 60, or 20 minutes. In the event of a tie, after the third period, an overtime period can be added. In music, fractions are used for various notes. The type of fractional note tells the musician how long each note is played. Here we told you what fractions are and some of the ways they're used in everyday life. But as you'll find out, they have many, many more uses. As we say, fractions are very important when we need to break things into parts and talk about those parts. Working with fractions is a very important part of math. As you go through your math journey, you'll learn a lot about working with fractions and how they can help you with everyday life and your activities.